and welcome back to the Element Optics Hyper 7 video series where we've been running through everything you need to know about our new smart rifle scope. Now, in the previous video, we did some initial setup and showed you how to pair the Hyper 7 with the Element Ballistics app. In this one, we're going to run through the Element Ballistics app in a lot more detail and show you how powerful of a tool it can be um, for calculating quick firing solutions with and without the Hyper 7 rifle scope. Now the idea of the Element Ballistics app is that it's not built solely for the Hyper 7. It's built for obtaining a firing solution with any scope on any rifle. So it is made to operate entirely independently of the Hyper 7. If you have a traditional scope in MIL or MOA, the Element Ballistics app will help you to calculate firing solutions that you can use no matter what your setup is. The calculator factors in atmospheric conditions, wind, spin drift, aerodynamic jump, incline or decline angle, and the drag curve for each individual bullet type to give you the best data possible. The ballistic software that's in the Element Ballistics app is exactly the same as the software that's in the Hyper 7. The processor is obviously different. This uses your phone's processor. The Hyper 7 has its own built-in processor. But as long as your inputs are the same, your outputs should also be exactly the same, which is awesome. You might ask, um, why would you even need the phone if the exact same software and capabilities are in the Hyper 7? Well, the idea is that you should use the Element Ballistics app to set up your profiles, to set up your preferences, because the user interface is just so much more friendly on the app. Then you send it over and after that's done, you can leave your phone at home and you can focus fully on shooting without all the complicated inputs. So first things first, unit preferences. I'm going to go ahead and record my screen so we can do this together, but I'm going to hit units at the bottom left and you can see there's everything there separately. We haven't just put a blanket over it and said, you know, metric or imperial because we know that some people like to mix and match. Me included, I live in a country where everything's metric, but I grew up using feet per second, so I'm used to feet per second. You get the idea. You might be a PRS shooter in the US where everything's imperial, but you want to use MRAD. So um, choosing things separately is, is very useful. So range units, you've got yards, meters, or feet. Um, just choose whichever one you want there. Zeroing range units, let's say you are uh, an American shooter that's used to using yards, but you've gone to a competition in Europe and you get to a 100 meter range and you end up zeroing at 100 meters. You can use meters as your zeroing units and uh, the actual calculator will factor that in. Angle units, um, this is interesting because we've got MRAD, we've got MOA, these are sort of the main units that your firing solution is going to be displayed in. But if you want to use inches or centimeters, it can give you the firing solution in those units also. And if you want to use clicks, you can select the unit that each of your clicks is in. So if your scope's got quarter MOA clicks or eighth MOA clicks, you can use, uh, you can use one of those and it will give you the solution in clicks and display clicks uh, in, in the screen. Or you can use 0.1 MRAD. So pretty straightforward there. Sight height, sight height units, uh, inch, millimeter, or centimeters. Um, this is really, really important to get this measurement correct because without getting an accurate sight height, that is your actual distance between the center line of your bore and the center line of your rifle scope, um, the ballistics calculator is not going to be able to function perfectly. Really important to get that right. Muzzle velocity units, feet per second, meters per second, Pretty straightforward. Wind speed units, miles per hour, meters per second, or knots. Don't know many people who use knots, but it's there if you want it. Temperature units, pressure units. You know, if you've got your Kestrel set up with specific units, just choose the same here. Otherwise, the Hyper 7 just measures it automatically, so it's not that important in the context of the Hyper 7. Energy units, foot pounds or joules, and bullet size units, millimeters or inch. And there you go. Those are your unit preferences done. Once you've done that, you can simply connect to the Hyper 7 and you can just go upload profiles and it will send all your unit preferences over to the scope as well. So very, very easy. Shouldn't take too long. Boom, done. Dismiss, 
disconnect, unit preference is done and dusted. The unit preferences are for both the app and the Hyper 7. So some of these will be displayed in the scope itself, like range, wind, elevation, stuff like that. Then on the app itself, you'll have input parameters shown in the units you prefer and firing solutions displayed in the units you prefer. Next, you will want to create some profiles. Now, the app itself has four tabs where you can create four different ballistic profiles at a time. These are the profiles that get sent across to the Hyper 7. However, if you want to save more than four profiles, you can do that simply by exporting them. You can export them to uh, your notes on your phone. You can email them to yourself. You can share them with friends over WhatsApp or email or airdrop and you can also receive them if, if one of your friends has a you know a profile you've got the exact same rifle as them for some reason they can um, share it with you and you can import it as one of your profiles so it gives you a way to kind of archive and save um, certain profiles that might be special to you once they're on the hyper 7 you can switch between these profiles in seconds and each profile can have its own zero also the fact that you can set a zero for each profile is really useful because as long as you use the same torque specs every time you mount it and you mount it on the same place on each rifle, you should in theory be able to switch the scope between different rifles, select your profile for that rifle and be pretty much uh, on target the moment you set it up, which is awesome. But even if you don't want to uh, switch between rifles, having different profiles can come in really handy. Something I found really useful is if I've got a hunting load and a varminting load, let's say a heavy uh, ELD match bullet, and then I've also got a varminting round that I would use for general pest control purposes, I can create two different profiles, two different zeros, and I can keep both those different cartridges with me, and let's say I'm varminting, and an opportunity comes up to shoot a game animal at much longer distance, I won't want to use the vomiting bullet, that's fine. I can switch profiles, I can pull out the long range bullet, pop it in, and boom, all done. No need to try and remember what your point of impact shift is. This can also be useful for thermal clip-ons. Some thermal clip-ons actually shift your, um, your point of aim or point of impact slightly. So having a zero for your thermal clip-on when you, when you attach it might come in really handy also. Modifying these profiles is very straightforward. First, you select the tab that you want to edit. I'm going to go profile two. Your first tab at the top there is your bullet selection. So you can enter parameters manually or choose from uh, quite an extensive database. If you choose to do it manually, you're going to get a few options. You can choose your, uh, your drag profile. We've got G1, which is more of a sort of flat based um, kind of very generic bullet, G7, which is a long range bow tail bullet, GA, which is an air gun pellet, and RF4, which is a rimfire bullet. So you're gonna to wanna to select the, um, the drag function that's closest to the bullet you're using to get the most accurate firing solution from a single BC. Next, you enter the, the ballistic coefficient, uh, bullet weight, caliber, and bullet length. The length is quite important because this is, um, a parameter that goes into calculating stuff like spin drift. If you want to select from a database, you can also do that. So let's say I want to go full ball bullets. Um, I would select my manufacturer. I'd select my bullet diameter. And there will be a whole bunch there that you can choose from. I'm just going to stick with the VMAX. Next, you're going to want to input your um, rifle parameters. So you've got muzzle velocity, um, 3410 is what uh, my rifle is set to, uh, sight height, again this is really important and just a reminder you will go from the center line of your bore to the center line of your rifle scope. That difference in height will need to be factored in. Your zero range, your rifling twist and the twist rate. Um, once again, this is needed for calculating spin drift, but this should be uh, published with your rifle. So you should know what this is from, you can even check it online, I guess, if you need to do that. 
and then BDC reticle step. We won't talk about this too much now. We will talk about that in the, the reticle video, but essentially your BDC reticle step is how often do you want your corresponding range to be shown as far as lines go on your BDC reticle. This is something you'll have to, to play around with. Next, weather when zeroing and current weather. Now, this is less important for the Hyper 7 because the Hyper 7 obviously has built-in sensors for everything. It will update this in real time. If you're creating a profile for a different rifle, then you'll go to your weather. You can either enter everything manually, like copy it across from a, from a Kestrel, for example. Um, you want to select update current weather from sensors on a scope if you're using the Hyper 7. And then you can also go get from internet. My data is off right now, but if you select get from internet, your phone will send your current GPS location uh, to an online service, which will obtain the weather from the closest weather station to your position and send it over to your scope. So you've got updated weather. This, is, this has become very useful. Um, wind speed and direction, once again, you can use the Hyper 7 to input this in real time. But if you're not using the Hyper 7, you'll put in your wind speed and you will put in your wind direction and you'll hit update. And then at the bottom, you've got the name of your profile and you can share or import your profile. And then of course, range and angle. Once again, the Hyper 7 has inputs for these so this is not important for the Hyper 7, but if you want to obtain a quick firing solution for a different rifle, let's say I'm shooting 600 meters at an angle of 10 degrees. There you go. I've got my uh, firing solution in mils and centimeters. There's also a reticle option. Select the reticle option. It will display your predicted point of impact on a reticle. And it uh, gives you a much better idea of where to hold in relation to your zero point. We've got a reticle database, so you can select, let's say, Element Optics Immersive LPR 1D BDC reticle if you're using that, and there you go, it's displayed right there. If you're using the Element Ballistics app for another scope, let's say, for example, Helix, there's a reticle view that we've added. You can select the reticle that you need from a database and it will display the predicted point of impact for the parameters you've entered. There is also a compare tab where you can look at graphs of your different profiles, a tune tab where you can calibrate different parameters by triangulating with other parameters you already know. The graphs tab shows you graphs for the specific ballistic profile that you have selected and table gives you a chart with all the data that you might need. Lastly, you'll notice a gap on the bottom right. Um, that's where we'll be adding a course of fire feature where you can add stages in a PRS match and targets within each stage to obtain a faster firing solution just before your stage starts. Of course, we're talking about all of this in the context of the Hyper 7. So once you've got your profiles where you want them, make sure your Hyper 7's on, connect to the scope, make sure you've got the reticle you want, hit upload profiles, and it should only take a few seconds to get everything onto the scope. There you go, done. Of course, before you can actually shoot, you will still need to zero the scope. We'll look at that in part five. But first, in part four, we're gonna talk about the actual display of the Hyper 7, going through what each little section or um, number means on the display and help you to orientate yourself there. If you want to see a full playlist of this video series, go down to the video description below. We'll have the full playlist there so you can watch everything in order. Otherwise, you can go to our website at element-optics.com and check everything out there. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.